Church Proverbs chapter 13. Now, if you go to, you know, at the top of the chapter, at least in my reference Bible, and I know this is it. This is a proverb of contrast, uh, and, and what they and what Solomon does is he's going to say something about someone, and then then he's going to go in the opposite. It's going to be like a good person does this and a bad person does this, and he kind of names them all here. All right. Uh, he says here in verse 14, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of the death. Uh, every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool, so you see like in 16, you see the contract, prudent, fool. And our verse here, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 17 says, a wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful, so you see the contrast, wicked against faithful, a faithful ambassador is help. Let's pray, Father, again. It is good to be saved and to be in church. And just, Lord, thank you for bringing everyone to church nice and safe. We ask you to bless the message. And may your words always be spoken, uh, not my words. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, this is a kind of a continuation of what I've been preaching on the past few weeks. And I think we're going to get another message out of it. Because uh, when I cut lawns, it's a very monotonous job. I'm just doing this. And, uh, and I think a lot. And I've been thinking about the messages. And two weeks ago, I, I preached on the thought of what we have. And remember, we have the manuscripts, the Holy Bible. We have the message, the gospel. We have the man, Jesus Christ. We have motivation, that's heaven. We have the mission. The mission, Jesus said, is to go. And we have the ministry. And that, that was for us. If you're a son and daughter of Almighty God, uh, that's what we have. And then last week, we kind of did a contrast. Uh, we looked at what they have. And you say, well, what's they have? All right. Uh, they, have uh, they have their manuscripts. Remember we talked about the, the Queen James Version Bible, a, a perverted Bible that is pro-homosexual and takes out all the Bible verses against homosexuality. They have the Naked Communist book, which is a, a manifesto uh, talking about how America will be uh, godless and have all their 45 points. They had the Da Vinci Code book, all right, which is an anti-Christian book. They have their manuscripts. They have their mission. Uh, they have, excuse me, they have their message. Our message is the gospel. Their message is humanism. In fact, uh, the official motto of the American Humanist Association is doing good without God, all right? We have the man. Jesus Christ, they have the monster, the great dragon, Satan. Right? We have the motivation, heaven. Uh, their motivation is to be that of anti-Christ, anti-church, and anti-Christian. All right? We have the mission to go. We have the mission to do. And just as we are active in promoting our message, uh, so are they. All right? It, it is a contrast. All right? They have their mission and ministries. Uh, the humanist societies of the world are very active in recruitment and teaching. And we looked at the summer camps that they do for kids and stuff. And they have their mission and ministries as well. All right. This past week, like I said, when I can cut them some lawns and, <laughs> and I've been thinking about the things that we have, uh, we have a lot more things. All right. And I'm just going to uh, continue on that. We have more things that are godly, more things that are for us now in the present, and more things that are for us uh, in the future. So we're going to just jump right into the message. Uh, we have all those good things, the man, the manuscripts, the mission, the motivation. We also have personal messengers. We have messengers. I'm going to try to keep that alliteration thing going on with the letter M. Uh, we have the messengers. Those messengers are angels. All right, Psalm chapter 91, verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, and to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, angels is from the Greek angolus, which literally means messenger. Now, listen, I am going to take a very biblical, balanced, practical look at angels. I think there are those that take it to the, you know, the, you know, the ump degree, and they got the medal, you know, the, the angel medallions, and, oh, I'm going to pray to my angels. No, they're just helpers, and they're messengers. 
but you know, they're in the Bible, we gotta look at them. All right? All right, Hebrews chapter one, verse 14, angels are called ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. There are angels, they're there, to, they are here to help us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, he said, take heed that ye despise not these little ones, talking of children. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. So, you know, uh, some Bible scholars debate whether we have a personal or guardian angel. You know, some people say no. You know, some people say yes. Uh, listen, there's billions of angels, and I, I believe that, that there may be angels sitting right here. We, we probably do have a personal uh, angel. Jesus said, to the children, the babies, their angels. That's that's a possessive thing, all right? Do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Angels help and protect. They help Daniel, all right? They reveal information, all right? They guide, they provide for, they minister to believers in general, all right? After Jesus fasted in the 40 days in the wilderness, what happened? The angels appeared to him and ministered. All right. When Peter was in jail, he had the chains on him, and all of a sudden, what happened? The doors opened, the chains came off, and Peter's like, what's going on? An angel appeared. So they are real. All right. And again, uh, I do believe in angels, and I do believe in, in even personal guardian angels. All right. Guardian angels act and help to defend us from evil. I do believe it. Uh, the Bible talks about a spiritual battle. Just like the, de the devils and the demons are trying to attack us, we have angels that, that fight them and, and protect us, all right? I also believe that they work in our lives. Uh, you know, you see the little cartoon with the angel, good angel on the one shoulder and the little devil on the on the, but I, there's a little something to that. Sometimes you feel a little nudge or a little whisper or a little pinch, it may be the Holy Spirit, it may be an angel just trying to help you and to try to turn away some demonic activity. God surrounds us with a host of angels that, that, that protect us and go before us. Even when hard times come, Satan can never snatch us away. Why? Because we have the protection of God and, and God sends his angels to protect us. And when we die, I do believe that an angel will escort us to heaven. There's a little comic book in the back table called This Was Your Life by Jack Chick. And the man dies and they bury him. And all of a sudden the angel comes up and kind of does one of these things and he's all flying into heaven. And I, 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 there may be a little something to that. All right? The reality of God's angels should give us great confidence in the Bible's promises. Again, uh, I'm not going to take the kooky thing and you know, just pray to angels and have angels do that. No, they're there to help us. They assist us. They protect us. We should do all our praying and talking, not to angels, but to God. It should be, oh, angel Joe, please help me. You know, no, it's Jesus Christ, help me. And Jesus may say, send an angel to help you. All right? Now, this is a little, I'm not going to say this is Bible. All right? This is just something that I've done in my, my own studies. And I watched some of these videos yesterday, last night, during the week. These, like, YouTube videos. Uh, they say, has an angel appeared? Now, some of these videos may be doctored, I don't know, but there was a couple of videos that I watched. One was where a girl had gotten into an, a car accident and was gonna die, and then they couldn't get the jaws of life. And they were in the middle of like somewhere like in Iowa, it's all cornfields, it was all isolated, there were no houses, and like all of a sudden, a man dressed up as a priest showed up, comforted her. Some of the machines, the jaws of life weren't working. They started to work. They pulled her out of the car, took it to the hospital, and within like two seconds, this guy disappeared. Could have been an angel. I don't know. Uh, believe me. Uh, you know, uh, just go, I don't know, go on YouTube tonight, search, are there any, and, and then there's one, there was one in China, I think. You know, these, these guys, they, they, they ride the bikes, and they have the little cart, you know, full of like bananas or, or vegetables, and there he's going down the street, and this truck driver ran a red light, and you can see the video, the clock ticking, and it's just like, just about to run him over. And then you see this little like lightning bolt, and then the guy's like taken away. And I'm like, could it have been an angel? 
Maybe. Could it have been someone, you know, involved in the, in the technology, these videos? But uh, listen, I, I believe that, that angels do uh, intervene in our lives sometimes. In fact, Good Morning America, that TV show on ABC News, had did a story on one of the sto on that story about in the farms where this girl almost died. So, you know, I'm not saying ABC News has proven this, but, it, you know, it's not just YouTube videos. They did a story, and this guy just mysteriously showed up, all right? Now, remember, our ultimate guardian is not an angel. It is God. Remember, God is the ruler of angels, all right? God is in all places and all times. He knows all things. He's ever-present. He's always our protector. But it is through him that angels can receive directions, all right, can accomplish his will. They are created beings that serve God and serve us through comfort, protection, and through showing God's love. Angels are messengers. All right, uh, the angels, remember, announced the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To who? The shepherds, right. Okay, and what had happened after that announcement? In Luke chapter 2, and suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, glory to God in highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. So after the announcement, the announcement of our Lord and Savior Jesus, a whole bunch of angels showed up and they started singing in front of these like shepherd dudes. And oh boy, didn't they have a story to tell. And oh boy, didn't they head over down to Jerusalem and look for this Savior, and hey, we've seen these angels and they appeared and they sang, and, Woo they real. All right? John the Baptist was called a messenger. He was a great prophet who would announce uh, Jesus as the Savior. All right? John said in John chapter 1, verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. He's, he's, a, he's a messenger, but he's also a prophetic messenger which was prophesied that this great man would come and be the messenger before Jesus comes. And you want to know something else? If you're a born-again Christian and you love God and you want to do something for him, you're a messenger as well. Uh, we've got our angelic messengers and we've got our Bible messengers. You're a messenger well as well. Why? It's our job as a messenger to bring the message, which we looked at a few weeks ago, the gospel message. All right. It's also our jobs as messengers, just like the angels, to help and rescue those in need, to guide those to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to, pro to provide help and care and love, not just to believers, but to the lost as well. We're to help our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord as messengers. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints. As messengers, we are to help each other, given to hospitality. We are the messengers, we have the message. All right, and also remember, they. Now we got to do the contrast. They have messengers as well. All right, Paul said when you know the great apostle Paul started all these churches, spread Christianity throughout the you know Europe and the known world. The author of thirteen uh, books of the Bible. He says in 2 Corinthians twelve seven, they was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above messengers. Uh, excuse me, above measure. And it's just like our job as messengers and the angels to help and rescue those in need, guide those to our Lord and Savior, and to help the lost, and to help our fellow brothers and sisters. It's Satan's messengers to do the contrast, to do the opposite. <laughs> All right? A Satan will never help you. He'll hurt you. Satan and his messages put the hurt on us. They will put us in danger. They will not rescue us. They will be a thorn in, the, in your side. That's what their job is to do. All right? They are to hurt our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. Just like they attacked Paul, they're going to attack you. They're going to attack me. His personal name, Satan. 
Satan means what? Adversary, enemy, the opposite, contrast. I think the name indicates Satan's basic nature. He's the enemy of God. All of God does and all of God loves and he don't like us. He hates us. He's also called the devil. The word devil means what? False accuser or slanderer. All right? Remember the, the story of Job? Remember chapter one, and and you know, and the, and the sons of God appeared before uh, before God, and say, and the devil Satan showed up, and what did he do? He just said, God, your your, your man down there, Job. The reason why he's got all these kids and all these monies because you put a hedge of protection, and he's just doing it because he's successful because you're protecting him. He falsely accused accused Job. All right. Other titles of Satan include the tempter, the wicked one the accuser of the brethren, all right? And three titles that point to Satan's authority in this world. He's called the prince of this world in John chapter 12. He's called the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians chapter two, verse two. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, this is a big one, in whom the God of this world, God with a small g, not a capital G, all right, when Adam and Eve sinned, they vacated the, the kingdom, the whole thing. This is this is this planet Earth is God. It, it's, it's, not, it's, it's Satan's. It's, he's the God of this world. Hath blinded the men of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Second Corinthians 11, 14, that Satan transforms himself to an angel of light, which is a deceptive light. Again, showing that he's a that he's a false accuser and a liar. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 24, Satan is referred to as Beelzebub. Isn't that creepy, man? Right if you're like that on the TV. Anyone know what Beelzebub means? I think they made a movie, Lord of the Flies. Lord Beel, thou, thou, Lord, Beel, Bub, flies, Lord of the Flies which is a false god of the Philistines. And in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus calls Satan a murderer. All right? Peter warns us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, see, there it is, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Just like, you know, Christians and, and even in God and Jesus or a type or a picture or a lion, there's also the bad lion. And man, I've seen some of those YouTube videos where the people go to Africa on the little safaris and oh, here's some like lions, let's throw them a stake. And they don't want the stake, they jump in and they attack people. And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to find Christians and just walk around and sneak around. Oh, look, he's a little boot and snatch them up. He wants to devour, devour you. And you know why Peter wrote this? Because Peter knew from first experience. It was Jesus that told Peter that, hey, Peter, it's the devil, man. He wants to sift you. He wants you. Jesus warned Peter about that. He, he may sift you as wheat. And you say, what does sifting at wheat mean? Right? Sifting at wheat is like a farmer's thing. They get the crops and, and they have this like mesh and wire and they gotta put the, the, the stuff through it and it gets sifted, but it gets cut up because there's little wire bars and it and it separates and it but it also to the corn and it doesn't hurt them, but to a human being putting through a sift, it hurts. It's painful. Alright? And it, it wants, and Satan wants to put Peter through this sifting thing. It's a jagged edge wire forming a mesh with hole shaped to, to get the little stuff out. I'm not a farmer, but it hurts if a man goes through it. And Satan has his own messengers as well. Satan's not the only messenger. He has his demons. He has his devils. All right? And Satan has man himself. Just like there's Christians, there's atheists, and there's antichrists, and there's people that are against us. Let me give you 10 signs. I'm going to go through pretty quick with minimal comment. 10 signs of Satan and his messenger and his messengers. All right? The 
first thing is lying. Like Satan lies, and Jesus calls him the father of lies. All right. If you see lying, and 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 uh, you know, we're not talking about you know, my 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 wife says, hey, did you did you water the flowers? I said, yeah, I watered the flowers, but I also flooded the back. You know, oh no, he said, Satan is the father of lies. Satan blinds. The minds of unbelievers, 2 Corinthians 4, verse. If you're blinded and you're being deceived, that's Satan. Satan masquerades in costumes of light and righteousness. All right, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says that some people are posing. These are men now as messengers who are apostles but are really not. They're false apostles. All right, Paul calls them the doctrine of devils. They're false prophets. They're within the church. All right? That's why we, I take a hard stance. If there's a false prophet, he pull out the dough. All right? Jesus calls them wolves in sheep clothing. All right? And these wolves in sheep clothing, just like lions, a wolf will not spare us lambs. He will eat us. Satan can do signs and wonders. All right? Be careful. Um, again, I, I hate to you know, reference these YouTube videos. Some of these like modern magicians, I forget, what's that guy with the little mustache and the goatee? It's kind of popular. Um, I see some of these things. I'm like, no, this isn't like the old quarter behind the ear trick. I mean, he's doing some like elevate. Uh, it's signs and wonders. Second Thessalonians 2, even him who coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Satan is a tempter, and he tempts us to sin. Remember, he tempted Eve and won. He tempted Judas, and he won. All right. Paul warns us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled or tricked Eve through, sub through subility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Watch out, the devil, one of his missions is to tempt you to sin against God. Remember, didn't the devil tempt Jesus after the 40 days? I mean, during the, I'm sorry, during the 40 days and in, in during his fasting. Remember Jesus said, Jesus, just bow down to me and I'll give you all these kingdoms. I'll give you all these things. Hey, just cast the, just turn the, the stones into bread. Doesn't the Bible say, hey, and he tempted them. He tempted the Lord, he tempted Eve, he tempted Judas, and you know he's going to tempt you, he's going he's to tempt me. All right? Another thing Satan does in his messengers is that he'll try to pluck the word of God out of people's hearts and choke their faith. Remember the parable that Jesus taught about the sower? You know, the sower would just kind of scatter the seeds and... Some would fall on rocks, and some would fall on hard ground, and some would fall on good soil, all right? Some would fall in the wrong path, and the birds would come along and peck the seeds and eat them all. And the disciples were like, what are you talking about, Lord? And he said, the Lord, Jesus said, the seeds are the word of God. And those birds that come along are like the devil. They come along and they pluck the seeds, and they want to take the seeds of God's word out of your heart, all right? Satan loves it when he can take away God's word after it was planted in your heart. You know, we have to be careful. I'm not talking about my messages, but if you ever hear a Bible message or a sermon and you get in the car and boy, man, that message was stupid. That pastor didn't know what you're talking about. You know, that's Satan tempting you to pluck the word that was preached to you. All right? Satan's also a murderer. That's quite obvious. This look at abortion, euthanasia, anything that has to do with murder is going to always do with Satan. Jesus calls him a murderer. John reminds us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one who slew his brother. The first man that was born in the world was tempted by the devil, and what did he do? He murdered his brother. He was from that wicked one because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Satan comes that he might destroy life and wherever he can, he will. Satan also fights the plans of missionaries. 
Right? Paul tells us during his missionary trips and stuff, he says in 1 Thessalonians 2, but we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in hard endeavor, now more abundantly to see your face with great desire, where we would come unto you, even Paul once and again, but Satan hindered us. There's the, again, Paul's, you know, Paul is this mighty man of God. And what is he saying throughout his letter? I got a thorn in my side, which is Satan. Now I'm trying to start churches, but Satan hindered us. We trying to grow this church. You don't think Satan trying to attack this church? You ever read some of the old, like, missionary books and stories that some of these missionaries went to Africa, you know, where they did voodoo and they did cannibalism, and they were like, man, this is, this is wicked, this is demonic. That's right. Some of them missionaries, you know, the old joke boiled in the pot. That absolutely happened. Satan's a murderer. He'll hinder, he'll hinder any time he can the work of God. One of the things Satan does right now, you know where one place, well, let me read the verse first. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Satan accuses Christians before God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Day and night. Do you know, Satan is not omnipresent like, omnipresent like God. God's everywhere. Satan can only be at one place at one time. But do you know where Satan has access? And you know where he could be right now? He could be in heaven, standing in front of God's throne, falsely accusing you. It doesn't say until Revelation 12 that he's kicked out of heaven. Just like he went to heaven to falsely accuse Job in front of the, in front of the Father, he could be doing that right now. Let's pick on old brother Gordon, Mr. Happy Face. Yeah. Let's say you were driving yesterday and someone cut you off and you didn't say some kind words. Boy, I'm gonna get you, man. I'm gonna take out my gun and shoot your tires, man, I curse you. And uh, Satan looks, Satan, boom, he's up in heaven. Father, Mr. Deacon, oh, brother Gordon, oh boy, did we have a little potty mouth yesterday. And what does Jesus do? Father, that sin is forgiven, it's under the blood, and the Father says, Satan, you can get away from me. But, and it says day and night. This is what God the Father has to put up with. Day and night, Satan falsely accusing or accusing us. And it's not to Revelation 12 that God just has enough and says, adios amigo, and you're out of here. All right, number 10, Satan causes some sickness and disease. Jesus healed a woman who was bent over and could not straighten out herself. And when, and when Jesus healed her on the Sabbath, all right, Jesus said, Lo, 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And, uh, uh, oh, excuse me. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. Jesus saw that this woman with this physical issue, this illness, was bound by Satan for 18 years. All right. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil. A lot of people are oppressed by the devil, either through demon possession or physical illness, and, and, and God allows Satan to do this, and Jesus comes along and heals us. And praise God we have a messenger in Jesus. Praise God we have a messenger that heals us, a messenger of Jesus that saves, a messenger that loves, a messenger that protects, and a messenger that mediates. Remember, Satan will not win. We win because of what Jesus did. Amen. We're the winners. Satan is a defeated foe. He cannot harm you. Worst he can do is make you a little sick and agitate you a little bit. We got Jesus. We win because of what Jesus did. John says in 1 John 3, 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. 
For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's his end game. Satan lose. He gets bound in hell for a thousand years. He gets let up for one last time to tempt everything. He fails, and the Lord just takes him to the lake of fire, and he's a defeated foe. We win, he loses. Paul said in Galatians 1, For who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. All right? We do live in an evil world, and Jesus will deliver this from us. Paul said in Romans 8, 38, For I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The devil, his demons, the government, nothing now, nothing later, nothing above, nothing below, or any other demonic creature can ever separate us between the love of God and us. We win because of what Jesus did. Now here's five, I just gave you ten signs of the devil. Here's five things the devil wants you to do, wants me to do. He wants us to doubt God. That's the first thing he said to Eve. Hath God said? They can't really say that. It doesn't, doesn't really say in the book that you can't do that. He wants us to doubt God. The second thing he wants you to do, he wants you to live in fear. Fear is not an absence of faith. It's just a misplacement of it. Listen, we all have faith. We all love God, but we get afraid. And instead of just saying, hey, devil, get out of here, bud, we go, ooh, the devil's here, oh, man. <laughs> no, we get afraid. We don't have to live in fear. All right? Psalms 34, 4, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. God doesn't want you to live in fear. He wants you to have faith in him. The devil wants you to feel insecure. Don't let the devil tell you that you're unloved or you're not good enough. All right? We're all sons and daughters of Almighty God. We're all equal before him, and we don't have to feel insecure. Okay? We are the children of God. In fact, Ephesians 2 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Paul reminds us in Romans 8, 37, Nay, on all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're conquerors. All right? We, we, we sound like we're defeated. Ah, uh, you know, this law, that law, abortion, blah, blah, blah. it's okay. I had a friend, of, and then, listen, usually I'm the belly and complaining. I had a friend of mine doing the same thing. And I said, Randy, Listen, New York is not our home. Heaven is. Keep your eyes on the prize. Listen, you don't think there was murder and, and perverted stuff going on? It was going on since the times of Noah, since the times of Jesus, and the times of now. I mean, it's always fun complaining about it. It makes a good point in the message. I like it. I like doing it. But, you know, there's nothing we can do. But remember, we're the winners. We're the conquerors. We're made in his workmanship, and we never have to feel insecure about that. Number four, Satan wants you to avoid church. The more uninvolved you become in the body of Christ, the harder it is to grow in your faith. It isn't easy to follow Jesus in a world that doesn't. And when you leave the community, the church we were made for, you're destined to be devoured by the devil. And number five, the devil wants you to fail. And we've, we've, we've all looked at this. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, For we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body and the dying of the Lord Jesus, that he, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. All right, we have Jesus. We have the victory. There's nothing that can be done that can hurt us. My Bible also says I can do all things for who? Christ. Not because of me, because Christ strengthens us. The Bible is a book of some negative things, but it's also a book of a lot of encouraging things. And encouraging ways to win and defeat the devil and his messengers. How can we win and defeat the devil, Pastor Hank? That's a good question. I just happen to have a few tips here. Number one, James 4, 7, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And the devil, he will flee from you. To solve the problem of sin, temptation, carnality, and the strife that it causes, 
We must resist the devil. How? Submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God. <laughs> Submit yourself to God. We all got a little John 3, 16 in us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, I got that. But that's not submission. That's believing. Submitting is to believe what the book says. It's following God. And if you stick with God, hey, the devil's going to say, well, he's too tough and he's going to flee. All right, James also says the next verse, draw nigh to God. Get close to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. The call to draw near to God is an invitation and a promise. God said, you get close to me, I'll get close to you. We'll be budged, and I'll protect you, and the devil, he'll never touch you. In fact, he'll flee from you. Isn't that a good promise of God? To draw near to God means to, to draw near to worship. To draw near to God is to draw near to praise and prayer. It's by asking counsel of God. It's enjoying the communion with God. Drawing near to God helps us resist the devil. It helps us become pure, oh sinners. We will sin less if we're closer to God and the devil will flee from us. Drawing near to God helps us think of others that helps us think of eternal things. Resisting the devil messenger is, is, resisting the devil is good when you have God in the equation. Drawing close to God is good. Another defense against the devil is prayer. What's the Lord's Prayer? Probably 90% of us recited that thing a thousand times when we were kids in church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as, in earth, as, as on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to give us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And finally, we get to verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Resist, pray, ask, seek God. God, you know... You know, I got some weaknesses. And, and, and I want to get close to you. Please get close to me. I don't want that devil. And I got to pray and trust. Don't, don't let the devil tempt me. James again reminds us. James is a good book. He says in one, uh, chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. And that's one of those crowns that we've talked about. When you go up in heaven, you're going to receive some crowns. And if you've lived a holy life and you defeated the devil, you didn't let the devil tempt you, and you lived a clean life, God's got a crown for you. Your crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right, we're going to close here. And I think we're going to get another week out of this with this. Uh, we have that they have the letter M stuff. Uh, but we got the right messenger. We got Jesus Christ. We got the angels. We are fellow messengers of ourselves, and we are to bring the message of the gospel to those that are lost. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next week will be interesting. I'm thinking, I wrote a little thing, letter M. We got the mansion. We got the music. I mean, yeah, yeah, music. Oh, boy, some of you rock and rollers come on to church. Oh, yeah. You know, like, we got a lot of things that begin with the letter M, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at those. But let's pray. Father, again, thank you today and Lord just uh, it's been a fun little series with the way have we have and the they have and contrast and Lord everything that you've given us is good and it's just good for our lives it's good for our well-being and it's good for our eternity and Lord just help us be better messengers so that we may bring the message of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the lost and we love you and thank you in Jesus name amen all right. Now, my music director reminded me last week that Pastor Hackey was so wound up that you forgot to sing the closing song. Uh, <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah. So I'm not going to forget it. So come on up, gentlemen, and, and piano player, and let's sing a closing song. We're going to have a, a closing prayer. We're going to have a closing benediction. And then we're going to be closing out on a lot of chickens. We got a lot of chickens today. So thank you.